Greetings from Bangkok, Thailand, and welcome to 30 Minutes Promoting Unity in Diversity with Wani Angerer in Moving Cultures. Our guest, number 152, is a woman that has done everything in life. She has already acquired two degrees, one in law and the other one in business. She is a passionate person on fashion, not only because of the way she dressed, but how she understands fashion is a way of living and also a representation of the person who is actually connected to aesthetics, beauty, culture, and of course, humanity. Her name is Meron and she comes from Kenya. Hello, Meron, how are you? Hi, Wani, how are you doing? Fantastic, so happy to have you in our series. Thank you for having me on board. I'm really humbled and I appreciate it. And we are also very thankful that you decided to come forward and yeah. share your journey, your passions. What is 2022 is preparing for you and also for the people nearby? And the first question is, who is Meron? Um, Meron Dimpana or Meron is, uh, first of all, she's a woman, not, yeah. Uh, also, I'm a lawyer, uh, I'm a businesswoman, uh, I'm a content creator, a fashion stylist, and I'm also a personal shopper in regards to fashion. Fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. Maron, talk to us about your upbringing, because I know your upbringing has a lot to do with your way of thinking and your career. What happened in your childhood? Why are you so connected with aesthetics? Um, first of all, I was brought up in the village by my grandmother. Uh, my mom left for the U.S. when I was two years. So my grandmother and my grandfather, they took care of me until I was 18. So when I grew up in the village, you know, uh, we were, um, I would not say forced, but we were nurtured, you know, to dress conservatively and uh, to dress for comfort and also for, you know, to just hide. And uh, I grew up not liking that and uh, rebelling just a bit because I always wanted to stand out with my clothing and my fashion because I was a very quiet kid. So that always made me stand out, you know, among people. But it also made some people very uncomfortable because in the village, you have to be very modest. You know, you don't have to wear something that is not out of the norm. So that helped me to want to get more into fashion and into styling and into, you know, everything beauty. Even though the community where you were raised was a little bit uh, conservative, yes, you managed to understand the beauty of tradition. Yeah. Right? So uh, yeah. the, the way I, I met you was through a photograph exhibition of Engage. They yes. was uh, portraying African women in yes. their traditional outfits and work. Yes. yes. Let's it talk was. about that. Uh, first of all, uh, at the end of the day, whether we go international, fashion is always inspired by our culture, you know, where we come from, you know, uh, what you saw your grandmother wearing, you know, the big earrings, you know, right now that is in fashion. And even though she wore them and cut her ear like a big, you know, part of it, now it's made it a bit easier for you to disappear and wear a big earring. And then when it comes, you know, it comes to, you know, things that just, uh, you know, for, you know, the upper body. Nowadays, there are crop tops. Nowadays, there are things that have been made modern. But people do not know that the originality of it is the traditional wear. Even, you know, the way the Kikuyu, they wear just one hand. Nowadays, mm -hmm. those one hand dresses, you know, everything comes from there. And at the end of the day, we need to pay homage and respect to our culture and where it all came from. Because there's nothing new under the sun. Everything has just been modernized. Everything was there before with our great grandparents. It's, it's just now with a new twist of modernization. So that inspires me and that also helps me draw back from that and respect that. You also connect with the, the diverse community of people. Yeah. And that also have uh, bringing you into this uh, international pod. Talk yes. to us about your connections. Um, I've connected with uh, people from different nationalities, people from different tribes, different races. And um, that, 
that first of all helps you to appreciate your differences because at the end of the day you'll realize that you're different from this person you're different from this other person and it's mostly it's not only based on the language the skin color it's also because of their culture and their traditions so that way you look for ways to be able to connect it, it's either through fashion either through something that brings you together because at the end of the day you'll always be different you know mm-hmm. i cannot be I'm different from Mama Sai, but when it comes to clothing and what we can blend, you know, I'm different from this person in Europe, but when it comes to clothing and fashion, we can be able to meet together and be united despite our diversity. So that way with this communication and being open-minded and appreciating what this person brings to the table, it's helped me interact with them and even get closer to the people I never thought I would be close to, you know? Mm-hmm. You yeah. are giving the opportunity to several clients males and females yeah. to understand themselves through fashion yes what is your role as a stylist um naturally as a stylist um when it comes to it depends on the client if it's a uh, you know if it's a celebrity and they're doing a photo shoot they want me to bring something to life i bring that if it's if they want to do a video shoot if it's a client who is not a celebrity and just needs a wardrobe change, you know, um, to revamp their wardrobe, I am able to bring that to the table. So my role as a stylist is to show you what you didn't know you need and also to show you that something could look good on you despite you not thinking, you know, it would, or despite what society says, or despite you, you know, being insecure, maybe in regards to your body, in regards to your skin color, I'm able to, you know, bring that out of you to show you that, you know what, it's okay to wear this. Look at, you can, you know, wear it with this and I'm able to show you the beauty of fashion and not just the norm where you're supposed to do this. Um, you know, cause style changes, you know, fashion, mm-hmm. you know, but style changes and also style encompasses uh, one's personality, one's attitude. So I'm able to help you bring that out by styling you according to your preference and according to your comfort at the end of the day. Venues and locations also play a very important role in your work. Yes. Tell us about your partners, because I know you work with hotels, uh, restaurants, and, and different places in the city. Yes. So uh, the venues, at the end of the day, uh, they show the kind of people you're networking with, and uh, also the kind of, um, I don't know what's the right word to say, uh, the kind of stature. Because uh, people that you'll find at this high-end five-star hotel are not the same people you'll find at a restaurant, right? So you're able to treat people according to how, you know, what they're used to. If someone, you've met someone in this high-end restaurant, maybe they prefer to just have sophisticated looks and you work with them towards that. You might meet someone at a different location who prefers a whole different vibe. So you're able to respect people and where they are at in life and work towards according to what they want. Because it's not about you at the end of the day, it's about them and their needs. So you ask them and also you look at the surrounding, which also guides you in regards to bringing the kind of things that they need to the table or the kind of style. So that really just helps with that. Yeah, so in this moment, we're talking about demographics. So it means that you practically move up yeah. and down on the social scale. Yes. Because definitely, if you are going to work with people on the rural areas, they yes. have different needs. The people who is in the business or the entertainment or, exactly. or at home or, yes. or people who is in commerce. So you, you really take care to understand the environment where your clients are coming from, right? Exactly. Exactly. You hit the nail on the head. Yes. Yeah, Meron, let's talk about Kenya as a multicultural society because you have over 50 tribes in the country. Yes. yes. Uh, what can you tell us about that? Um, Kenya um, on its own, it's very diverse because of the different tribes that we have. Uh, despite us wanting to live as one, we have to understand that every tribe brings something to the table. And if we go back to, you know, back in the day where people were identified by the outfits they wore, the languages they spoke, because now nowadays people 
we can decide to all wear, you know, the modern clothes and you will not know the tribe that someone is from unless you ask them, you know, but back then because of the language and nowadays we speak English or Swahili, which is, uh, you know, the language that is spoken in our country. But uh, back before when the only way to identify someone was by what they wore or by their language. Now the difference is despite uh, us being different cultures, we are able to identify that. And also we are able to work together despite of that. Because mm -hmm. uh, at the end of the day, it's all about unity in mm -hmm. diversity, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, we are able to do that in, you know, in the job market. It doesn't matter if you're Luo Kikuyu or Luya, as long as you all deliver. If you meet in a social forum, you know, as long as you network and you're able to help each other grow, that has helped us grow. And despite the fact that sometimes during elections that we could, you know, end up being divided because of different factors, at the end of the day, we come back together and we realize that as Kenyans as a whole, we are all facing the same problems if it's uh, whatever is happening in the government. So we overlook our differences and we work together to form a common goal, which is to be united and also to help each other grow and move forward. So mm -hmm. it's not, of course, been easy. I will not say it's been easy, but it's a working progress. And we are able to identify our differences and that we come from different cultures and different tribes. You also take in consideration the origins of the people according to the geographical position, because sometimes we have people who come from the desert, people yes. who come from the coast, yes. people who come from uh, cold weather like Nairobi can be a little yes. bit cold in comparison with other places, yes. mountains and so on. How do you uh, use that opportunity of nature, yes. you know, a geographic uh, constellations in yeah. order to do your styling? Um, first of all, um, despite the fact that uh, we have different, uh, you know, he, uh, we have people from different demographics, uh, the thing also about Kenya, you know, as a whole, and even Nairobi is that uh, we have seasons. We have the cold season, the rainy season, all those seasons. So when it, despite, um, you know, fashion being there, we'll, dress for the season because if we decide that you know it's during January when it's the hot season and you want to look good in winter clothes it's not going to work for you so what guides me is what is the season in my country you know mm -hmm. right now it's rainy, rainy season just a little bit it's been raining so of course I'm going to fashionably dress for the rain and I'm going to fashionably advise my clients that I need to sell them for the weather so that mm -hmm. it makes sense so I am mostly guided by the seasons in my country, the weather seasons in my country. That is what guides me. What about the work you do uh, making women understand their beauty, yes. their uniqueness, yeah. and their strength? How mm -hmm. do you do that? Um, that is actually a very good question, and I appreciate that. Uh, in this age and era of, uh, you know, of the internet and uh, you know people selling unrealistic beauty, especially with uh, you know the big brands and um, before Victoria's Secrets, you know before they decided to change, uh, mm -hmm. it's been very hard on women because now it's um, portrayed not even not portrayed. It's made us you know think that we are not perfect. It's also made us to think that our insecurities are illuminated. And we fail to understand that these are not really insecurities. These are what makes you you. We can all not all be figure eight or figure what. We are all different and we, we are all created different. So the beauty of it is, is to understand your uniqueness. So with these women is um, I will help women to dress for their body, uh, dress for, you know, dress and uh, have something that illuminates their beauty. And... Uh, hides and I say hide by quote their flaws if it's someone who is curvaceous I will not let her dress in something that is not fitting I will let her dress in something that is well fitting appropriate and something that she feels comfortable in if mm -hmm. it's uh, different skin tones because uh, especially the darker skin tone with colorism going on in the world uh, and people saying that because you're dark you cannot wear something that is very bold or something that is very I tell them no as long as it looks good on you and you are happy about it 
that is what matters because everyone will say something. One, you wear a pink lipstick and someone will tell you it's too bright. You wear a dark one, someone will tell you it's too dark. They can notice it. You don't wear anything and people will be like, you're not even trying. So who can you please, right? <laughs> uh, as long as you look good and you're comfortable in it, that is usually my selling point because you cannot be able to please everyone. And when you look good and you feel good, no matter what anyone says, you will not listen. You will not even hear it. Leave alone listen. You'll be very okay. So that has helped me because I also have insecurities. And also it's helped me, you know, talk to women as I'm selling them and they tell me I'm not comfortable with my body. I tell them, you know what? How about maybe you start working out? It's going to also to be beneficial to your health. And mm -hmm. they start working out. And, uh, you know, in a few months they say, you know what? I love my new body. I love my new weight. It's not that they didn't love it before. It's just now they're more confident. It's the co confidence is the key. Mm -hmm. And confidence is brought by working out, eating right. So I'm able to give them these tips and not because I want them to hate the body that they are currently in, but it's so that they can improve their confidence and even their health and their life. Because when you eat better, your health is better. When you work out, your health is better. So that way it's helped me help women in regards to appreciating themselves and even improving their beauty. And I say improving, not because they were not good before, but the confidence is more now that they've worked out. So that has helped me help women when I'm styling them. Okay, so it means that you are practically helping them to understand their self because you yes. are working their mindset. Yes. When we're talking about the mindset, it's really yes. understanding that yes. how you feel is what is going to be projected because it's a projection. Right, and if the person is doing a projection that doesn't belong to itself, yeah. of course it's not going to be suitable. So at the okay. moment you do your styling, you work on their mindset so they can understand themselves and whatever yeah. decision they take, doesn't matter what the world say, if that yeah. person is happy in the way it's looking, she's going to yeah. look beautiful for everybody, right? It is, exactly. Yeah. Yep. And you're also mentioning an important element that is nutrition. So we we let's go let's put all this together because you yep. are doing a holistic work. Exactly. So we are talking about the mindset and the emotional yep. side of the person. Then we are talking about the physical state of the person, exercising, yep. uh, having an active life, eating yep. properly. Exactly. Right. Yes. Having yeah. a good nutrition. And yes. uh, at the same time, what about the understanding of the movement of the person? Because that's also very important. Yes. Like, you know, sometimes if you don't connect with your physical body, you don't yeah. understand how your body moves, right? Yes. Because yes. each person has different types of bodies, yes. different structures, different weights, different needs no every women can use high heels no right you know yeah. so and, and, and let's talk about those details when yeah. you actually customize the yeah. the client because not everyone can use fake nails or fake hair or makeup but yes. that person can still look fresh and dynamic and, yeah. and, and gorgeous let's talk about that so when it comes to that, uh, I, I like to mostly work on the mindset, yeah? Because everything starts from here, Wani, you know, what you think. So I advise my clients and I highly suggest, first of all, you need to mentally work on your confidence. You need to believe that you are the best you can be. There's no other you. You need to believe that you're good enough. You're amazing. You need to say these things to yourself every day, even if you don't believe them now. Say them to yourself every day in front of a mirror. Time, you know, as time goes by, you're going to start believing in them, you know. So when I work on that, I also help them realize that things like nails, you know, the long nails, the what, those are just to add on to your beauty. You're already beautiful, but those are just to add on to them. The heels and all that, those are also just to add on to them. But not everyone looks good in them, you know. And not everyone is comfortable in them because comfort is very, you know, it's key. You can look good in it, but then you're this way, like it's almost weird. You can't even eat or function and you even make it look weird. So I tell them that if you want that, it's okay to want it, but does it look good on you, number one? And are you comfortable in it? So when I put these things into their minds, 
and they try that and it doesn't look good. They, they don't feel bad that, you know what, I do not, can't walk in high heels. I do not look good in this. So they are able to understand that it's okay to have them, but they're just an addition to their beauty. And in regards to etiquette, because I'll call it etiquette, because like walking in high heels, that is etiquette. You cannot be walking like you're drunk. You cannot be walking like you're, you know, you're paralyzed. You, you have to, you know, there's a way you walk in there. So when I, you know, style a client and they're walking a bit funny, I will lower the heel, you know, to see if they will still, you know, walk like that. If they walk better in that heel, I will highly suggest the lower heel. If they are still struggling, I would suggest for flats because they're very beautiful flats. As per drills, you know, these flat shoes, there are so many beautiful types of them. And I'll tell them, you know what, this is still in style. Even though it doesn't have a heel, it's still in style. And would you rather look good in this flat shoe or look hideous in this other one? So I will speak into, I don't say their inner child, but I will speak in, I will speak from the heart and to their heart because mm -hmm. you can only send someone from here. You know, mm -hmm. so when you move the emotion, when you're able to show them that you're on their side, but and you also want the best for them, and they will be able to change their mind and say, you know what, I don't need it if it doesn't make me look good. So that is what I do. I make sure I work on here, I work on here, and I show them the reality. You know, let's talk about the influence of TV and celebrities and their body types. You know, the, for example, there is a, a small shape person who will yes. like to have the body of a person who has big hips and big uh the rear and that doesn't work i know there is a lot of chemicals being used in order for the women to to acquire that physicality talk to me about that one day i was a victim of that and i'm sorry to say that i wanted to be big like a big big hips and big you know mm -hmm. down there and I was, I almost was this close to buying those chemicals. Oh <laughs> my God. Uh -huh. I, yes, like, and um, and that was no longer ago. That was last year and the years before. These mm -hmm. days when I, I said, you know what, it's okay. Like I started like no, fully loving myself, right? And uh, it got also, I also started buying, you know, there are these bikers that they have bigger sports. Yeah, it's like a, a fuller, you know, it's like yes. artificial, artificial bars. Yeah. Yes, mm -hmm. I bought those. I, mm -hmm. uh, I wore them once and the looks I got were amazing, especially from the opposite sex. And I was like, you know what, this could be me, you know? And uh, I started working out more, you know, to gain nothing. And I started eating the right kind of, right kind of food to gain there, nothing. So I, I got frustrated. That was last mm -hmm. year, right? And, um, and, that's also, and I'm not going to blame anyone, but that's what I've seen. Right now, the standard of beauty right now is the big butt, the big hips, you know, like that curvy shape. Yeah, but it's, it's it, small waist, big exactly. butt, yeah, exactly. breast, yeah. yeah. So back in the day, it was just the boobs, back in the day, in the 80s, mm -hmm. yeah. So right now, it's not that. And uh, I, I just sat down and said, you know what? You know, in a few years, maybe the hands will be the norm of beauty. Now, you know, yes. <laughs> she won't change it. and I said, what will I say to my daughter if I, you know, I apply that and I'm bigger or I do that. And then I said also reading up on these things because knowledge is power. And you see how cancerous they are and how harmful they are. And I said, for what? Why am I doing this? Because it, it isn't for me. Don't get me wrong. It's so mm -hmm. that people can see, you know, it's so mm -hmm. that maybe a member of the other sex can admire it and i'm sorry to say that yeah so yeah. that maybe another lady can be like oh i love her figure you know and make her jealous and i'm mm -hmm. and I yeah competition and, some kind of know, a competition exactly so i sat down and i told myself for the sake of myself and my daughter because what will i tell my daughter if she's not that kind of you know body type how will i convince her that she's beautiful and it's okay not to be that way I will be a hypocrite. So when mm -hmm. I when that dawned on me, I was done. And uh, it's still like if you go downtown, you know there are a lot of these people selling those creams. Also, people selling creams to enlighten your mm -hmm. skin color. Mm -hmm. And because it's always been, you know, even colorism, even in other, even in the you know Latina community, Indian community, they still prefer the fair skin people. And I'm mm -hmm. sorry to say that. So like there are so many of those creams being sold because most of the celebrities, you they'll go through that kind of treatment, but the good one, not this one that will cause cancer. They'll go for the good one 
and they'll come back looking, you know, very fair because there are a few of them. I don't want to mention names. And of course, you see that and you're like, you know what? I want that kind of transformation because most people like, you know, they, they say that uh, black is beautiful, but light is attractive. You see, attractive. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. So when you see that and you see that from someone you're emulating or a celebrity, you as a young person, of course, your mindset is going to be changed to think that is better to think that is better. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. no one, unless your mother advises you or someone older than you advises you and instills that in your mind, you know, from my young age, you're always going to believe that that is better until it dawns on you that it's not better. Mm-hmm. What you have is better. What they have, everything, what this person has is better. It's just, it just depends on what you have. What you have, you, you, Don't better. you think that it also has to do with the environment? Because mm-hmm. if you are being raised in a group of people who are so materialistic yeah. that they want to reach certain levels as the ones the, on the TV or in the movies and so on. And this is talking about all cultures, Indians or Europeans and so on, yeah. uh, that you get unsatisfied with the way you are and with what you have. Because at the end of the day, it's not being lighter or with a different body type that you're going to get a job or that you're going to to make a family that's very unrealistic you know it's only uh, a dream that you are following because you are being influenced by the media yeah yeah it's because uh you see like i grew up in the village so i cannot say that i saw people in the village doing that but yes. what I was watching on TV, it was mostly fair skin. Even the telenovelas, you were just seeing those beauty people, beautiful people. Even our Kenyan films, it was just very beautiful light skin. Even nowadays, uh, there are some jobs in Kenya, especially, you know, uh, the customer service kinds of jobs. And even like, um, you know, some others, like uh, even cabin crews, some other, I'm not, not everyone, that actually say you have to be fair skin. Like mm-hmm. they put it on print and uh, you see that and you actually immediately you think something is wrong with you. So of course, and right now that we are introducing our children to TV and social media, which is so everywhere, it's not going to get any better. Mm-hmm. In my time, I had TV, but now in this kid's time right now, they have social media, all those platforms selling the same thing. And now everyone is this way on their phone. So unless the old elders, our parents, unless they advise them, it's not going to get any better. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Meron, yeah. what about the consequences of these uh, interventions? Because we know there is a lot of celebrities and also personalities who have been defigurated or mm-hmm. are actually dealing with very terrible illness because of this uh, intervention. I think it's important to really talk about this and let people know that they are practically compromising their life, you know, at yeah. the moment they they take action at this level. Yeah, and I'm glad you mentioned that. You know, like I usually sometimes I watch Botch. I don't know if you've ever seen it. It's on yes, I've seen it, yeah. Mm-hmm. And sometimes you you see this book coming and they had surgery elsewhere and they, you know, they look very different and now they need, Another surgery to make them a little look reconstruction. Exactly. Thank you for telling for saying that. And uh, sadly, despite the fact that that is not shown very much on TV, it's only the beauty side that is shown. The beauty side of the Brazilian butt surgery, you know, BBL. That's what they call it, mm-hmm. or the liposuction where your waist part is taken from your waist and put elsewhere. They mm-hmm. only mostly show that. But unless you go deep and you know watch some other things or read into it, that's when now you see the other side when things don't work out. And also they do not show you that some of these things can be cancerous, they can cause cancer unless you read into it. As when they're showing you this beauty, beautiful person, they don't show you, they don't tell you, you know what, you could get cancer from this. They, like the way when they, you know, when you smoke, when they tell you that it could cause lung cancer, at least that yeah. they tell you. But with this, uh, the beauty uh, procedures, procedures that, they do not tell you that and uh, it, needs people to be wiser to say okay you look like that but what happens and also they don't get to like um just the other day i was seeing in kenya my country that uh, going through that construction body construction where you know you get the brazilian um butt lift and then also you know the, you know like you look 
it's it goes for 900,000 Kenyan shillings. Yeah, which is a lot of money, you know? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So what are you trying, like you're trying to show it that it's impossible on one hand, and also you're trying to show people that they need to work towards that. Mm-hmm. Like what is that? Instead of people being shown that they need to work towards their dreams and society, not only society, because society is very large, I think this is uh, people who are closer to us, you know, parents, aunties, just people who are closer to us and people who care about us. They're the only ones who can advise us against this mm-hmm. from an age, who can show us, you know, the things, you know, the side effects, the bad side effects, yeah? And also who can instill in our minds that we are okay the way we are, because that is okay. the bottom line. When yeah. you know that, you will not want this. You will not even care about the side effects because you don't even care about these things. Being instilled, that confidence from a young age, it does wonders. Yeah, this is it's a situation that has to do with understanding your person. Let's go to your images, Meron. Okay. This is the cover of our interview and conversation. Yeah. And okay, here we have some of your styling images. Yes. yes. And, and this is like putting in combination the location and yes. the clothing, makeup, and yes. attitude, right? Yes. Okay. Let's talk about this one. Yes. So this is basic, it's basically a blazer and, uh, you know, it's a long blazer that can be worn, you know, out at night, but also during the day you pair it to the pair of pants and you go to the boardroom like a boss, you know? So mm-hmm. it's uh, very versatile and versatility is very important when it comes to styling and fashion. Okay. Yeah. Is this the same blazer? Exactly. You see what I was telling you? Yeah. Yes. So if so I you can, a blazer, you I can use it as a dress, and you can use it also as a cardigan. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. So this is a crop blazer, and they're very in right now. The, that's the previous the one. Blazer. Okay, let's go back to the previous one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. This one is a it's a crop blazer, and right now it's uh it's actually trending. You can wear it with the high waist pants for the boardroom, and then with a pair of leggings for a night out or just ca- casual wear. Mm-hmm. And yeah. then white is also very in at the moment. Yeah, exactly, and it's the same blazer that I wore. Mm-hmm. The you see the versatility. Yeah. Yeah, with white trousers, it looks very different, you know. Exactly, you can go to a meeting with it. Yeah, yeah. So this is uh, an open blazer and a pair of shorts. You for an evening look, but when you put a pair of pants, you know, it goes to a day look because, uh, and then you close the blazer. You can go to a meeting with it. Mm-hmm. Yes. Here you are in a very comfortable and casual look. This yes. is what we call an urban touch, right? Yes, it's the urban touch, yeah. Yes, urban touch. Okay. Yeah, so that is just basically when I'm just at home, you know, just dressing in a romper that is comfortable. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But it's also important to let people know that even if you're at home, you can find very simple, no complicated clothes, but it still looks fresh and and comfortable, right? Exactly, yes, that is the point. And this is our image from the conversation poster, but this is complete. And yeah. here you're wearing uh, high heel boots, right? Yeah, yeah, I'm wearing Lucite high heel boots. Uh, I was, uh, I went for a staycation with my friends and uh, we needed to, you know, arrive in style. And this is how I arrived. It is very casual, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. This is the same blazer, but I have revamped it and the leggings, and it looks very different. It looks like that, yeah. What about the hat? What is this, a straw hat, it's artificial, what is it? It's actually a beach hat. It's actually a beach hat, but I decided to just style it like for that look. And uh, I do say it it does go well with it. Yeah, it's very beautiful. Yeah, thank you. Okay, let's talk about your, your banner. Yes. Mm-hmm. So I, yes, so I got this made when I was starting my, you know, fashion journey in 2015, because, mm-hmm. uh, and uh, the reason why I, I did, I said this slogan, I don't do slogan, sorry, I don't do fashion, I am fashion, is because fashion is, um, if you, you can become a slave to fashion, which means 
every trend that comes in, you're doing it and sometimes could do it wrong. But when you do, when you, when I said, I don't do fashion, I am fashion. That for me was more like, I am my own style. Like I create what is fashion for me. Because sometimes mm-hmm. I'll wear things that are not in fashion and outdated and I will make them seem very stylish. So it is very important for us not to be a slave to fashion, but to have our own style and make it, um, you know, and embrace our personality and uh, who we really are. Fantastic. Let's yeah. move to the screen. Meron, we already yeah. reached the three minutes of our conversation and it has been very enlightening and very mm-hmm. informative. Thank you. Uh, I appreciate that. Will you be so kind to give a message to the new generation and society in regarding yes. to unity, diversity, and inclusion? Yes. So in regards to all that, especially to the new generation, I would I would say just a few things to them. Number one is learn or read. You can get so much knowledge from learning and reading. Nowadays, because most of us are always like this and watching videos, and those videos are like secondary information from someone who read. Why don't you go to the source and read? When you read and you have knowledge, you're going to be able to do right. You're going to be able to know how to find people and also what makes us diverse. Mm-hmm. Also, I would like to ask the young generation to think outside the box. Uh, there's nothing new under the sun, Wani. Everything is already online, has already been done, but you can do that thing with your own twist. You don't need to copy and paste. Think outside the box, make it yours, make it one. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Also, I would uh, another thing I would like to ask them is that uh, seek advice from your elders. You may think they are old fashioned or they do not know, but they're wiser than you. They've been here before you. They've seen that or heard about that, even though they may not be doing that. Seeking advice is going to help you to avoid, you know, the bombs, like a field and then there are bombs. It's going to help you, you know, carve your own path and it's going to give you insight, which is very important. And last but not least, believe in yourself. That goes a long way. The world right now, everyone is about their business. But when you believe in yourself, the world will catch on. You cannot wait for the world or other people to believe in you. And when you believe in yourself, everyone else believes in you because they're like, oh, this one knows what they're talking about. So they join, they join your bus, you know, they climb the bus as it moves. So, and uh, last but not least, be you. If they can, there's only one you. Don't be someone else, be you. Yeah. Meryl, thank you so much. I'm so happy to have this conversation with you after so long, but yes. I feel that I saw you yesterday. And we, oh, I always enjoy your company and, and your thank conversations. You. Wishing you all the best in 2022, a wonderful end of the year celebrations. And I'm going to be waiting to see what fashion is going to be actually presented by you for Christmas and New Year's, because I know you're preparing something very special. So a lot of love from my side all the way from Thailand and sending you musical kisses and hoping to see you very soon in person, okay? Thank Take you. care. Thank you very much, Meryl. Bye-bye.